Hi, this is Fillington. Welcome back to our continuing coverage from CES, brought to you by MPB. And, uh, well, we're in front of QD OLED. QD OLED uh, this year is 4,000 nits on a 3% window. And I've got to say, I'm standing next to it here. Uh, compared to last year's uh, 2024 uh, QD OLED panel, um, which was 3,000 nits, so a 1,000 nit difference. But actually, when you stand in here and you're looking at what's actually going on here in terms of processing and everything else, um, it really does stand out. But of course, we're at CES, we're on a show floor, we're looking at material that uh, obviously Samsung Display have put together um, to show off the panels and show them at their best. Uh, but yeah, it looks like really interesting uh, technology again for this year. So we're going to catch up with Chirac. We do this every year um, and I've got lots of questions to ask. So let's cut to the interview. AV Forums CES 2025 coverage is sponsored by MPB, the trusted name in camera gear since 2011. Whether you're upgrading to the latest CES tech or decluttering your kit, MPB makes it safe and simple to buy, sell or trade. All gear is expertly checked and comes with MPB's trusted warranty. MPB.com is the site to visit. Jack, we're once again back at CES. It's becoming a bit of an annual event, this. Phil, it's always exciting to see you here and share what we have on QD OLED and OLED technologies. So let's jump in with what my audience will be interested in, which is QD OLED in terms of TV. Um, so what are the big stories this year in terms of QD? Well, 2025 is a very exciting year. There are three main things that I would share with your audience. Number one is we have the brightest QD OLED TVs. The 2025 QD OLED um, is using a hyper-efficient EL 3.0, that is our whole new EL material, that allows for 4,000 nits of peak brightness. That's truly RGB additive 4,000 nits. The second is our advanced Pico inkjet printing process, uh, which allows higher PPI, especially on the monitors. So we have the highest OLED pixel density uh, gaming monitors, 160 PPI, 27-inch uh, 4K UHD um, uh, displays. And the third thing is that when you, as you try to increase the brightness or the refresh rate, that usually hampers the brightness of the display. But with our hyper-efficient EL 3.0, as well as our kind of advanced uh, circuitry, we can ensure 500 hertz, so 27 inch QHD 500 hertz, the fastest display out there without actually compromising on the brightness of the display. I'm going to bring you back to 4,000 nits. Um, is that 3% window? Yes, so 4,000 is 3%, uh, 2,200, 10%, and over 440 nits on a full white, 100%. And of course you're driving the panel um, with, with processing behind there to, to boost that. Um, in terms of the makeup of the panel, is it a new generation? Yes, so it's a whole new materials uh, that we're using in this uh, panel. So if you, rem if you remember last, uh, we are, uh, our usual cadence is every two years. So last year we did not have a material change, we had what we call the quantum enhancer. But this year it's a whole new EL material that we are being that is being deployed in the QD OLED 2025. So what the hyper efficient EL 3.0 does is basically it improves the uh, probability of the light combination electrons and holes by over 30 percent. So what that means is you're getting 4,000 nits, but that doesn't in increase any power consumption. It's at, with the same power consumption, more recombinations, so more light elements are be, or photons are being created. Uh, at the same time, it's um, you know not adding any additional heat, so it's not driving the uh, panel uh, harder. It's actually true performance that you get uh, that's driving it to 4,000 nits. And of course, the the, the EL level uh, layer is is what gives you um, the RGB at, at the end of this. So just quickly for those who are catching up, what does EL layer stand for, and what exactly is it? Yes, so EL stands for electroluminance. So QD OLED is basically you have the OLED or the electroluminance layer uh, that is then combined with uh, our quantum dot, printed quantum dots. Uh, in our case, uh, in the case of QD OLEDs, it is the blue OLED uh, layers that are then combined with printed red and green quantum dots. Blue being a higher energy uh, wave uh, photon is then down converted. So we don't, uh, we're not using color filters to create red and green, but using quantum dots, we are down converting the blue photons to red and green photons for that pure and accurate color. Uh, one other thing 
which has been an issue with all the generations so far for some users is the black levels. Um, when you're using QD in, in a bright environment or in a brighter room, uh, it is elevating the black levels on the screen. So what are you, what are you doing in terms of that feedback, in terms of you know, making the, that, the technology a little bit better for environments like that? Sure. And I would say to that is that we've received mixed feedback. So some uh, users prefer that, uh, you know, the kind of what is it called? The anti-glare versus anti-reflection. Um, so there are, you know, two sides to that coin. I feel that with the 4,000 nits that you have experienced with our new generation QD OLED, uh, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, but we have some options as has been, you know, kind of introduced by some of our customers, especially on the monitor side, uh, where we can do like an anti-glare low reflection or anti-glare. But it depends on the application and the user scenario and we leave it to our customers. But we do have the capability if that's what one needs. So, it, it, you know, our members are out there, they're, they're listening to what you're saying here. So if they're looking to renew their TV this year, um, what is it that they should be looking for when it comes to OLED? I would say that this is a great year to renew your TV um, because, you know, you are getting the true high dynamic range. I mean, 4,000 nits for the longest time was like only the pulsars. Uh, you're getting that, but what's unique about the QD OLED is the true color luminance. This is not 4,000 nits through some trickery. This is true RGB. So you get the entire range, you know, what you're used to with the deep blacks of an OLED, but now you're combining it with 4,000 nits of color luminance for all the bright saturated colors. As you can see on our color jungle zone, the images really jump out as realistic. So these are colors that really, truly shot, you know, kind of like take away the experience that you're watching it on a screen and make it more natural because of the high dynamic range and the color volume. I know you can't talk about commercial partners, but are we likely to see more QD OLED equipped TVs on the market this year? Sure. Yes. I, I know you can't say more yes. than that, but that's great. And one huge area of growth at the moment is gaming monitors and, and so on. And you really are at the forefront of what's happening there. So maybe give us some highlights for this year. Yeah, so I think this year is another kind of a, kind of a quantum leap in terms of the uh, gaming and monitor segment. Number one is that we're introducing the 160 PPI, which is the highest PPI of any OLED monitors. So you can have 27 inch 4K QHD, we're also introducing the 500 hertz QHD 27 inch. So together you have the highest resolution as well as the highest and the most, uh, you know, with the higher motion clarity or refresh rate, uh, two great options. And the other thing I would say is that QD OLED is not just any more confined to gaming. We're seeing a great adoption by users, both in, let's say, uh, in the professional segment with our partners that are providing it to content creators and studios. We're seeing a very heavy adoption there, but also we're going to see a lot more adoption of QD OLED in B2B and other B2C segments like creativity, uh, productivity as well. And one area which uh, you know OLED is, is proving to be very useful is it can be bent, it can be manipulated into different shapes and so on, and automotive is, is a big area of the market. Absolutely. So automotive is, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, the automotive in-cabin experience is being redefined um, thanks to the catalyst of these electric vehicles. But, you know, even our traditional gasoline vehicles are looking to how can we make the experience unique. Uh, and here, I think Samsung Display brings some great advantages uh, with OLED. You get the perfect black, so more less distraction. Uh, higher ability to pick out the information because nowadays these panels are not just showing the speed there's weather there is navigation there's music there's a whole host of things that are going on that the driver always needs to be aware uh, beyond that we have you know completely unhindered the kind of design you can have from shapes from different um, you know uh, form factors like slidable rollable flexible uh, all in all it's a great year uh, for Samsung Display to provide these innovations for the automotive market. So as we wrap up here at the uh, Samsung Display stand, we've been looking at QD OLED, we're looking at all the technology there and obviously an interview from Chirac, which is also uh, very welcome. This is what QD is all about according to Samsung Display. It's natural colours, it's looking at the natural world and seeing it as you would see it 
with your eyes and it's been a very impressive demonstration here uh, so my thanks to Shrak my thanks to you for watching uh, remember uh, subscribe to the channel like the video and we've got lots more coming from CES this year and we'll catch you very soon in the next video